Hello there, my name's Stuart Williams. My name's Tim Allsop, and we are the writers and creators of Plus One, and this is our commentary for episode one. Yes, this is episode one, uh, technically speaking, the second episode we ever made. Now, as you'll see, you can, you can jump onto this series now, never having seen the pilot. Uh, however... If you have, you will notice that the introductory scenes for about the first three or four minutes are quite similar to the ones we did in the pilot, but they have the information in that the pilot didn't. Yeah, now the reason for this is because, as far as we're concerned, the best introduction to Rob and his world and the characters in it is in the pilot. However, we weren't allowed to do that for the sort of second first episode which is entirely reasonable because it's already been out on television yeah. so what we decided to do was fill in the blanks so in the pilot you never got to see the moment at which rob and Lindsay actually break up so we have this you never get to see the moment at which rob moves in with his sister that's what we showed instead yeah now this is our first fantasy sequence proper in the series mm. it's the uh, james bond dr no fantasy sequence Duncan there in his Dr. Now suit with a with a cat and a scar on his eye. That scar, in fact, was a prosthetic applied to his eye, which actually left him scarred. The glue he had an allergic reaction to, and it scarred his eyelid. So for about three months, I think. Yeah, he had that scar for three months after shooting this episode. Now, this particular fantasy was originally meant to be in episode, what is now episode five or yep. episode six in time of writing. And when we were shooting it, uh, Tim and myself, we were sitting yep. there going, this is like the best fantasy this is the most fantastical fantasy yeah so would it not be best service in narrative terms to set up the fact that rob jumps out into fantasies if we put it in the first episode there can be no doubt whatsoever that yeah. this isn't really happening and that this is just in his own silly mind so so, um, so we did that yeah it was originally meant to be in episode six as we say when uh, when uh, Laura turns around from goes, but doesn't that mean that Duncan's won? We'd have then gone to that, but we think, and I, I believe a lot of people, other people, agree with us, yeah. that it works really well there. Um, we were we'd originally written it with um, all the rest of Blue actually being in the studio at the time, um, rather than going were, to a monitor. Talks were had with the other three members of Blue to but, reform, and for a while it looked as though Blue would actually reform for the show. Yeah. However, uh, for reasons that we are not completely privy to, that deal didn't come together. No, so, so in the end we had a we had the video monitor of them, but, but uh, it think, worked just as yeah, well. Yeah, the gag still works. Now, here we scene. are, the, the all new, um, the all new Rob and Laura's office. However, it's all the same, pretty much except for one line dialogue, which yeah. is it's quite interesting for us to watch, because obviously we've got our new Rob here. We've got um, Danny Mays, much like Rory, another incredibly well celebrated British actor who have, have deemed to come down to our level and yep. do some cock jokes. Yeah. Um, we weren't allowed to keep really any of the um, dialogue from the pilot, except for this, because this kind of, for us, was our um, our main you know, justification for Rob. We need to it illustrate sets up the, the fact premise. that he, yeah. you know, he's not upset about the fact that um, Lindsay's with someone else. He's annoyed about it. He doesn't want it back. He doesn't still love her. He just doesn't want to look a twat when he turns up there. He's a petty little man. Yeah, and that's kind of the best way we could sell that. So that is almost word for word the same as the pilot. And this scene here, we re-establish uh, the relationships between all the characters. His friends, his brother, all in one space, which in this, is a, in this episode is obviously a new space. It's the new front room. It's the new mm. living area of Rebecca. Uh, a very glamorous, very nice uh, flat. We never ever explain what it is that uh, Ingrid actually, do Rebecca, does for a living, but uh, in our minds, she's an architect, and so as a result, has a very nice architect designed house. Indeed, the person who actually does own the flat we were filming in uh, is an architect. architect. Indeed, he's an architect, yes. Yeah. Uh, as you might have noticed, as we do, quite notably, that Nigel's character is a little bit softer and, for want of a better word, stupider in the yep. series. To so say, um, some of the notes we got back after after the pilot were to make it a little bit friendlier and less bitter. Yeah. And it, for our own purposes, it served us to make the relationship between Rich and Rob more amicable. Yeah, they love each other. They may not be the same sort of a person, but there's a lot of sort of familial love there. And I think hopefully this scene sets up nicely between all of them that they get on they love and they care about each other and there's the first of um, Nigel Strutt Ritchie's quote unquote teenage girlfriends uh, I think he has eight throughout the series yeah he actually has 
I think he has three in the first episode. He does indeed. However, um, that, that that was originally quite foregrounded that that he's got a continual stream of eighteen year old girlfriends, but that kind of gets lost in the in final the mix. version yeah. of what went to went to air. Uh, and here is Susie Amy. Note the uh, C D Walkman there to us to establish the fact that this is probably about ten years ago. And that's what the kids had. Uh, Danny did a lovely sort of homage to Kevin and Perry with this, and uh, he was unsure on the day as to whether it was sort of too big and too um, too large, but too silly, but... too silly. But it kind of really worked, and he just sort of said, "Look, do you mind if we do this?" And him and Sarah, the director, kind of had a bit of a chat about it, and uh, I think it works very well. Which I suppose seamlessly segues us into the fact that the series has a different Rob Black in the form of Danny Mays. Absolutely. Danny, much like Rory, is an incredibly well-celebrated um, act, serious actor. And that was part of what we wanted for the series. We didn't want a stand-up comedian trying to act. We wanted an actual actor who could just be funny. And Danny, a lot of people may know from Atonement or um, Vera Drake or indeed the, uh, the bank job. Yeah, because uh, what we said was we wanted about eight ninety nine. Yeah, we actually. wanted somebody like a John Sim at the time of the Lakes or an Andrew Lincoln at the time of not this life but Teachers. Yeah, somebody who's like a a star in the making, a star in waiting, which Rory was and Danny is. Yeah, very much so. And he just brings such a warmth to the character because I think you know a, a lot of what we write and we we have consciously from the pilot tried to make Rob a little bit warmer, but a lot of that is in the performance. And Danny's just got such a lovely, kind face and such a nice manner with However, him. However, Tim, I think we ought to point out that the one thing about Danny's performance that he's faked is that he never got that ball of paper in the bin. Um, he did about nine takes of that and never got it in. That's that the magic is... of the movies for you, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, yeah. Uh, that, but, that's our uh, Jurassic Park-style CGI moment. Yeah. But back to back to Danny. He's, uh, and this is in no way, shape or form, any disrespect to Rory, who's a genius, but we wrote a sort of darker, more beaten character in the pilot, didn't yeah. we? Whereas we wrote a more energetic, upbeat character, and Danny conveys that perfectly, I think. Yes, he does indeed. Now, we move on to, um, if you listened to our commentary for the pilot, you'll know that the chilly cock incident is based on real life. So too, Johnny Blacknips. Johnny Blacknips, yes, Johnny Blacknips is based on a real person. I ought to point out before we begin that he didn't have a sex change. He just got fundamentally picked on by every single person and all of the games teachers at school. Uh, it was a, I'm not going to give you his real name because that would be wrong and unfair. But it was a kid who was at my school when we were uh, uh, doing PE lessons and he's, he was of a dark Mediterranean hue and his nipples were so dark you could see them through his PE kit, being white t-shirt and shorts yeah. at my school. And um, he'd used to walk out of the, the uh, changing rooms past a tunnel of boys and girls... Almost every other child in his year, or in my year, at school, and, and they'd be going, Johnny Blacknips, Johnny Blacknips at him. And he used to be in tears by the time we got onto the onto the uh, the pitch. Poor Johnny Blacknips. Poor old Johnny Blacknips. And obviously, I'm, I would hope that he doesn't remember this happened to him as a youth, or if he does, he doesn't watch this episode. But yeah, he didn't have a sex change. However, this lady has. This is... Uh, Johnny Blacknips is played by a lovely lady called Angie, who uh, used to be a man and is now a woman. And, you know, that was important for us in the casting, that we did actually have a uh, transsexual playing the role, because otherwise that's just a bit rude, really. And next we'll be seeing um, Steve John Shepard. Yeah, uh, writing... Paul's bits and Paul's function in the show is sort of quite different from everyone else because we barrel along at such a speed with what we are, you know, how the story's moving forward. We don't generally tend to have anything unless it's there to move the plot forward, except for Paul, which is basically... Yeah. Paul's ever version of dead air. Paul's where we have a bit of a breather, where Rob throws him a feed line and then he goes off onto a comedic rant. For want of a better term, it's a minute and a half of stand-up every show. Yeah, um, and it's a sort of joy to write because it, Steve can deliver what we write. You know, we'll think about something slightly peculiar that Paul might be fascinated about. And then when you give it to Steve, his timing is never, ever what we imagine it to be. And what he ends up delivering is not as we'd written it. But it's always better. Infinitely and for funnier. It. You find, yeah. He finds a beat to that, as we may have mentioned elsewhere, and various other special features on this DVD. Uh, we call it comedy jazz because he never hits where we think he's going to hit. 
but it's always better for it's, wherever yeah. he does. It's always funnier because he's, he's found the beat where it isn't. Yeah, he's so. astonishingly gracious about it as well. He yeah. doesn't particularly think he's doing anything with it. Yeah. And, we, and we both sit there behind the monitors just going, but how did you know to do it like that? And... I know he's a very clever man. Yeah, we thank him very much. He's a very clever, very handsome, very talented man, but he's incredibly self-deprecating. Very, yeah, very nice man. Very nice man indeed. Um, as is Danny, actually. Yeah, as is Danny. And the two of them developed, I think, a really nice closeness through it. Um, there's a real, real warmth between the two of them, and I think you kind of get the dynamic of between the, two the entire of them. cast, actually. Yeah, between the entire cast. Yeah, everybody on the cast seemed to get along really, really well. It was a really nice, friendly set, which I know is sort of a cliche, but it was, you know, we all had great fun on the set, which usually translates from, from the cliche as being a terrible programme. But I like to think everybody delivered in spades, didn't they? Yeah, hugely. Uh, it's a beautiful set, this one. Um, very, very nice day. Everyone's looking very nice. What we've got here is um, the brilliant search engine searchwise.net. Uh, That's that used. one that we all use. Yeah, everyone's going on searchwise.net. Brilliant. Um, Luckily for us, we don't have to dwell on searchwise.net. Now we have to go to the Pierce Hair Salon. And the introduction of, I think, the only person in the entire series we were starstruck by. Yeah, oddly enough, um, throughout both of our careers, for various different reasons, we've met many, many, many famous people on many, many different levels. The only person I've ever found it almost impossible to speak to because I was starstruck was Julia Deacon. Um, I assume everyone listening to this will know, but um, Partridge, Spaced... Innumerable other programs of great merit. She's she's just she's a she's star. comedy royalty. Yeah, she's comedy royalty, and we're very 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 happy and lucky to have her. Uh, and yeah, we we barely said two words to her because we were just slightly embarrassed by the fact she was in some rubbish that we'd written. Yeah, so I can't. Oh, so she's doing our program. You know, we've got all these other brilliant, well-known faces and and you know exceptionally talented actors, but you know, Julie was the one that made us feel like twelve-year-olds. This and bit here, when when Danny does that in the mirror. Nice, I love that. And because then, then we cut to what we both think is our favourite edit in the entire show. Just a lovely, um, a lovely moment. And this for us was, <laughs> um, this for us was quite difficult because we came up with the idea of why doesn't he look? I remember we were sat around your house on the sofa and we yeah. said, why don't we go for Duncan's first love? And then we sort of went round the house as to what isn't going to be horrifically cliched. Is she fat? Is she ugly? Does she only have one arm? Does she, you know, blah, 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 blah. Is she genetically crossbred with an animal? And then, I can't remember, I think you just said, what if she's in a coma? What if she's in a coma? Um, because, fundamentally, then we... Uh, you don't have to give her any character traits. There's no. no way in hell she can come to the wedding with you, Rob. Exactly, and so then it's a sort of build-up for just, you know, it's, it's a complete wrong footing. That's uh, Romilly Turner. And what you're listening to is one of the many reinterpreted versions of All Rise by Blue, which we had commissioned. We had it on the organ, we had it on the harp, we had it on the piano, I think we had it on bells. Yeah, and I think there's a trumpet version, but it never made it in. Yeah. Well, you know, the trumpet version never does. Poor trumpet. <laughs> it's the uh, the poor cousin of the orchestra. Uh, now, this scene, we wasn't really settled until we got into the edit. Yeah, this section from here on in up until Rob starts the fun run is the part of the show that was rewritten the most, isn't it? Yeah, we were always... Um, the original intention for this was that Rob uh, has no... Uh, never means to go on the fun run at all. He just says it to impress Nicola. Then um, Junie, Nicola, uh, Junie walks in behind him, overhears, and then he's sold into doing it, which he never really meant to. But through entirely through our own deficiencies, it never really quite read like that. No, so it, it really needed sort of bulking up with the flashback in the edit and so on and so forth. And so we lost sort of lots of the lines. So as now, the intention is he suddenly thinks of it there and then and then agrees to do it, but the oh my gosh reveal is that it's only in two days time yeah but again that's that's largely down to um you know we had a read through for the entire series two days before we started shooting didn't we yes we did which meant that we did a drastic rewrite not drastic but a fairly hefty rewrite of the entire series in two days yeah two days so, before filming uh, uh, th th these things can fall through the net yeah as a result but i think it still i think it still flows forward fairly quickly yeah, luckily Danny does a really, really lovely, which we're about to see in a second, look to camera of, oh my God, what have I just sold myself into? And so I don't think you'd probably be any the wise that this isn't what was supposed to be going on. And that is the magic of television. Oh yes, ladies and gentlemen, oh yes. This used to be a far longer uh, uh, piece where Laura exp uh, tried to impress upon him that he was in real trouble. 
yeah. but in fact in the uh, best fashion that kind of our, our motto for the show is just keep barreling through it's just the salient piece of information you need to know oh gosh isn't it a long way and then it ends with obviously Laura saying um, a... teeing him up to look you can cheat there used to be a longer bit as well with his entire family telling him how he was never going to be able to do 10 kilometres with only two days training. There was this big, long, weird thing about him having brand new trainers on that were going to rip his feet to bits. To you try and to... sort of mislead the audience, but it never really worked. The only way we would have misled them was by writing some rubbish. Yeah, absolutely. So we binned all that and went straight to the race. And that was Danny warming up then, wasn't it? I have to say, I, we, I think there are a few things that pleased us more on set than seeing those T-shirts. Because if you go back to it and have a look... That is the photo that would be used if that girl was dead. Had perhaps it was a backpacking accident. That is the photo they would have shown on the front of all the papers. Yeah, it's just a lovely piece of art design. It makes me very, very happy. And when we saw the even the of, font is sl- is lame enough. Yeah, yeah, to be the right font. There was um, we sort of turn up on set and there was like twenty five extras all with that t shirt on. We just thought, oh, this is just silly, but quite. You good. say extra. I and they say supporting artiste. Tim. You are indeed correct, and I feel myself suitably chastised. Uh, this bit here where Rob's put his own money in, this used to be longer and more convoluted. It's like, no, just get to the point. Mm. Get to the point. That's how we managed to jam as so much, much in as we can. Yeah. We're shooting here in Battersea Park. As you can see from the glorious weather, it looks like a marvellous day was had by all. I can assure you that always within two minutes of any shot was an enormous great grey rain cloud that proceeded to piss on everybody for an hour. Yeah, we filmed this over three days, I think, in the park. And uh, toward the end, uh, which we'll see later on when Duncan arrives up at the end, uh, everyone's hair's getting blown around because it was genuinely some of the worst weather I've seen this year. It was so bad that Marcus Garvey, the fellow who plays the Samaritan, genuinely, I kid you not, got hypothermia. Yeah. That's how bad it got. But look how lovely it was there. But when they ran away then, the first take of the uh, the runners running away, um, Junie Pierce, Julia Deacon, tripped over the um, tape. And fell, arse over tit, I believe. over tit. The, uh... And sort of quite hurt herself. We were all really worried that she'd hurt herself. She was apparently more worried because she'd got terrible food poisoning and was that horribly afraid she was going to crap herself. But um, there we go, that's Julia Deacon, an absolute star from beginning to end. And this bit now where Rob enters into a fantasy, it's the first time we're sort of ambiguous about whether it's a fantasy or whether his plan to cheat and come out at the front of the pack has come to fruition. We don't often mess around throughout the series with this, but this is kind of quite nice for us that we were given that slight moment that we could possibly have wrong-footed people as to whether he does it. Obviously, it gets progressively sillier here, and so the clue's there that it's wrong. The main clue being this is the only cameo either of us have in the show. Yeah, people kept saying to us, oh, do you want to be in it? It's like, well, no, we're not competition winners. We we, we wrote it and uh, ourselves produced it. We, we're not. We've got no desire to be in it. However, I forgive you. That's my voice. That's my voice right there, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Powerful work. Powerful, Powerful work. work there. Like a like a young De Niro, I like to think. Um, in your prime. Um... Now we go back to Rob. Reality. And the first of the, the many stunts we have in Plus One. <laughs> yeah, surprisingly, there were quite a few stunts in this, aren't there? There's this, there's a car crash in episode two. To give you an indication of, you know, the lot of a stuntman, the man who actually did that stunt did Gladiator. Yeah. With Russell Crowe. Swings and I'm not saying it's a come down. Swings and roundabouts. Yeah. You've got to be prepared to take all jobs. One day you're battling a rhino, next time you're falling down a ditch. Here we go, you see. You can see there on Ingrid's face she looks quite angry. That's not acting, it's the fact that it is <laughs> minus seven Yeah, you might outside. have noticed that people have had coats appear out of nowhere. This is a lovely shot, I think. I really yeah. like that shot. Good. Uh, well done, Miss Sarah O'Gorman, our um, director on the series. Now we have our tramp. Uh, very ably, very ably played here. But the fascinating thing was so good was the costume and indeed his general demeanour that we were filming out in a park and often you do get, for want of a better phrase, mentals coming up to you trying to get in front of the camera and kind of annoy you. Everyone kept being freaked out by the tramp who was wandering up toward them. Yeah, I mean, I thought, oh, fucking hell, hang on, hang on. There's a tramp. Ah, that annoys me. His socks are too clean. He's a tramp, his socks are too clean. I've seen a tramp socks. I can assure you that should be dirtier than that. Still, let's not dwell. Yeah, he was, his performance was so realistic. Yeah, that you just kept catching what appeared to be a shambling tramp out the corner and of your eye. here we have one of our favourite new comedy performers, Marcus Garvey. Take it away, Tim. 
Um, Marcus is, for fat fans out there, he's the brother of the lead singer of Elbow, who just won a Mercury Music Award. Uh, he is, to give you the plus one chronology, he is the boyfriend of Lorna Watson, who in episode four plays... Um, Lisa Snowden's PA. Lisa Snowden's PA. Lorna Watson is also the uh, comedy performing partner of Ingrid Oliver, who plays Rebecca, Rebecca. Black in the uh, comedy duo uh, um, Watson and Oliver. So, so uh, there's a nice... Uh, sort of synergy throughout the series. Yeah, an incestuous comedy sewing circle, for want of a better term. Uh, this is just a nice big bit of silliness. Marcus has got that sort of tremendously earthy geography teacher vibe to him. Yeah. And I mean that in the nicest possible He's way. He's a lovely man and a very funny and talented performer. And he also runs away like a Roy Pillock. We love that. Ah, and there we are. He's just, uh, there's Rob Black. He's having kicking the balls. What could possibly be worse than that? I hear you ask. Saying your ball's going to explode in front of a small child. Now, that small child is the producer Matthew's daughter. Yeah. And that man there, her that, father... Yeah, that's angry dad in the script. Now, you would have imagined that, you know, he didn't really have much influence on the shoot. Oh, how wrong you would be. Uh, if you spool back to the beginning of the episode where Rob is running away, you will notice there are some people chasing him. Marcus, who we just saw, is chasing him. A policeman. Ang a policeman is chasing him. Angry Dad was supposed to be chasing him. However, on the very first take, Angry Dad, when running, got cramp in his leg, which meant we couldn't shoot for another 45 minutes, and then... Not just cramp, though, screaming in agony. Oh, yeah, cramp. it was like he'd been shot. Yeah. It was, it was like the Zabruder footage, wasn't it? <laughs> Back and to the left. He couldn't run. He couldn't even walk. He was in agony. And to take nothing away from the man, he was obviously in genuine agony. But to take something away from him, he held the shoot up for an hour. Yeah. Uh, However, so that's not will, a will never his skills and talents. No, he's a very talented man, but, yeah. um, you know, not good for running. Yeah. Uh, he you might have heard have... Uh, Search for the Hero Inside Yourself by M people there. We thought that was funny, but it kind of gets lost in the same mix. Ah, and look at um, Nigel's jacket and hat here, Tim. Ah, yes. Um... Testament. Poor Nigel is yeah. dressed terribly throughout the entire series. And indeed, when we were filming in Battersea Park, a couple of days later, there were photos of him in the sun um, questioning what the hell Nigel was up to, dressed like such an absolute twat. And you might want to note that uh, Nigel's girlfriend there is a different one to the previous, maybe two, yeah. girlfriends we've seen him have. Uh, interestingly, she's not an actress. No, she? she's not. She uh, turned up on work experience. Uh, her dad was friend of one of the uh, camera team, I think. Yeah. And... We, the girl who we had been sent to play Nigel's non-speaking girlfriend... Eighteen-year-old girlfriend. ...was about 35. Yeah. Um, and she turned up and she was lovely, really, really lovely girl and looked perfect for it. One of our favourites of all of um, Nigel's yeah. girlfriends. But because she's a non-professional actress, you'll note that she's one of the few actresses... Uh, well, actresses. She's one of the few girlfriends that uh, Rich has that he doesn't snog. Yes. Because Nigel is nothing but a professional. Ah, would that be the sound of the black keys till I get my way, Tim? It certainly would. Um, our last piece of information for you, this is the music we originally had on the pilot and we wanted this for our title music, but sadly it wouldn't clear. So we got it in the first episode at the end, but if we had had our way, this would have been our music for the series. Yeah, anyway, cheers for listening to us ramble on. For, Thank uh, you very much. We'll be back for episode five. Um, and there we have it. Free to bet. Or not. Your call, really. Preferable. Preferable yeah. if you did. This is my ex-girlfriend, Lindsay. That is Duncan from Blue. She dumped me for him, and now they're getting married. And to make matters worse, I'm invited to the wedding. The bastards. My name's Rob Black, and I need a plus one. Don't fucking ask. It all started last Saturday morning! Don't forget, it's a friend's double bill at 12 o'clock today. But first, a brand new T4 exclusive. He's a multi-millionaire pop star, a top TV personality, mm. a West End leading man, and a bloody good bloke. <laughs> She's the ordinary girl who tamed his heart. Ladies and gentlemen, pray silence if you please. 
for the greatest love story ever told. This is One Love, Duncan and Lindsay's Wedding. <laughs> Come on! <laughs> Duncan is the most incredible man I've ever met in my life. None of my other boyfriends even come vaguely close. She's a pretty special lady. Guys, if you ever get a girl as great as this, don't let her go. Oh, oh that's just taking the piss. Oh. 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 Can you believe the thing's on telly? I mean, it's bad enough I've got to go to it full stop. Now I've got to endure 12 weeks of the build-up to the bastard. Oh, what colour would the bridesmaids' dresses be? I don't give a fuck. Seriously, a fuck I am unable to give. Have you got a spare fuck on you, Rob? Oh, oh, hang on, let me check. Oh, oh, I'm really sorry, I'm completely fucking out of them. Calm down, Jesus. Calm down? Laura, now I need to find a plus one who'll impress 56 million television viewers. Rob, at most it'll be a million kids waiting for the Hollyoaks family bus to come on. Oh, oh, just one million people. Oh, that's OK, then. Cool. Come on, Rob. Could be worse. So, Duncan, new single out on Monday. It's fantastic, by the way. Thanks, Steve. Um, you've described it as a concept record, yes? Mm. I wanted to handle broad and more universal themes in my music. But the title, Rob Black, Your Shit, uh, does seem to be quite specific. It's just a made-up name, a kind of mythical everyman figure. In verse 1, the line, Lindsay reckons you've got a really weird bend in your cock. Lindsay's a girlfriend's name, no? Purely coincidence. OK, let's take a look, shall we? Have a look at this. Rub black your shit. Rub black your shit. Then my brother Rich said he'd found just the right girl for me to take to Duncan's wedding. That's my sister, Abby. Come on, I'll introduce you to her before the show. She's perfect, bruv. She's fit, she's posh, and she's a bona fide West End actress. Bish bash bosh, Duncan from Blue, booyah! Owned! Well, good luck with it, bruv. I'm off for a shit in a chock ice. I'm really nervous. I mean, I've only ever seen one musical in my life, and that was when Mum took us to see Starlight Express. And where'd you go with that? Yeah, pricks on roller skates pretending to be trains. Absolutely fucking hated it. This is Rich's brother, the record producer. The one we were telling you about, Rob. <sighs> Hi, Rob. Hi. Are you looking forward to my show? Wedding's quite lame despite all of his fame because Duncan's a twat, Lindsay's dress doesn't fit, and the catering shit because Duncan's a twat, the ring looks like it costs 99p. It's been a disaster, I'm sure you'll agree. I'm starting to wonder why she's marrying me <laughs> because I'm a what? How would you rate it against Starlight Express? Oh, God, don't bring a child in here. Are you stupid? I'm centering myself here. Get out! Is she talking to me? What a cunt! Come with me. She's an artist. They're highly strong. But I think she likes you. Uh, what a horrible woman. Why didn't someone say something to her? Because she has them fired if they do. What's the little fella's name? Henry. Mm -hmm. uh, is that Henry's daddy talking to Abby? No, no, no. No, no, that's my brother. I'm, uh, I'm single, actually. Some commitment to each and every performance that I do. Really? Jesus, I hope you're going to be livelier than this at the party. Party? Oh, hello. The bad taste fancy dress party on Sunday. I don't know, I might be busy on Sunday. You won't be. Oh, that's my call. Gotta go. Enjoy my show, mister. <laughs> oh, come on, you cock knocker. She's not that bad. So you go out of her then? Well, I actually do. 
Every time Zoe and I meet up, bush, there she is, Abby in my fucking face, turning up at the end of the night, just when I should be getting my end away. Cos she's just come off stage and she hasn't got a bloke of her own to hang around with. Oh, so you don't actually give a shit about me getting a date for the wedding. You just want a wingman so you can knob her sister. Well, I'm telling you, for the last time, no. So, are you looking forward to the party, Rob? Yeah, he's looking forward to the party. On your bra. Yeah. It's going to be brilliant. <laughs> the invitations were only sent out a week ago, but it's crisis time already. So many people have got back to us saying, yes, we're actually over capacity. We never expected everyone to come, didn't we? But well, it just seems that everyone loves Duncan. <laughs> Go figure. So, we're having to chase everybody up to confirm whether they want their plus one or not. I don't get it. How is this in bad taste? I got it because it goes with this. Huh? Wow, yeah, that, that is a good costume. I still don't get what I'm supposed to be, though. Oh, right, you're a panda. No, I get that. I was thinking more on a kind of conceptual what-the-fuck level. Oh, dear me. OK. You're going as the endangered species, and I'm going as the huntsman who killed you. Got it? Oh, and you'll need to wear this. A snout? Oh, well, that's changed everything. I mean, it all makes perfect sense. I am totally on board with this costume. You should have mentioned I got to wear a snout in the first place. Abby, can you give us a hand? Yes. Oh. The boy's got a problem. OK, first of all, pandas are mainly hunted by the Chinese, not 19th century British colonial huntsmen in bikinis. And secondly, you don't hunt pandas with the butterfly net. What are you? The fucking panda police? Oh. Look, it's one night out of your life. God, not even that. Just give us 15, 20 minutes, we'll find a, a cupboard or a casi or something and bursh, do the business! Ah, oh, banged in a lavatory by a PE teacher dressed as Hitler. Zoe be looking back on that one fondly in years to come, I imagine. Tell us about the good old days, Grandma. All right. But I am not guaranteeing I'll wear the snout. I love you, bruv! Yeah, OK, OK, OK. Just... just do us a favour, would you? Pick a different costume, eh? Something a little less, you know, Hitlery. Away, come through and get changed. <sighs> Please leave a message and I'll get back to you. Hi, Rob. Lindsay again. Um, just calling to find out if you're bringing a plus one. Well, that's it, really. Um, if you could let me know as soon as possible, basically, that would be brilliant. All right, thanks. Bye. You go as a fucking panda, then. Well, well, well. It appears that I have got a date, too. Really? Yep. First one in, what, 12 months? Wow, that's ages. That's what having babies does for you. No, that's what being a gay maker does for you. What do you mean? Rebecca here is a gay maker. She makes men gay. OK, that's not technically true. You sent your last bloke queer. No, I did not. He was gay already. Didn't stop you getting pregnant by him, did it? Henry's dad's gay. Yeah, but he'll be all right. He's got me as a strong heterosexual influence. Oh, brilliant, yeah. Thing is, he wasn't the first. So, Rich, come on oh, now, mate. The blokes she slept with... Christ, have you been keeping a diary or something? Three have turned gay, four were already gay, and one was bitten in half by a hippopotamus. He shagged three gay guys and another four have turned gay. You find that more astonishing than one of them being bitten in half by a hippopotamus. Well, to be fair to Zoe here, you sleeping with one man who's been bitten in half by a hippo is bad luck. Sending seven of your 11 boyfriends gay is pretty astonishing. I did not send them. They were already there. Maybe they mistook you for a man. Ah, oh, and one day someone might mistake you for a man, Richard. Unless they saw your feet, your tiny child feet, <laughs> all inky-winky tiny like dinky little Mr Tumnus fawn hooves. <laughs> yeah, well, footballer's feet, these. Yeah, Sabusio footballer. <laughs> So who is he anyway? I mean, where do you meet him? What, what does he do? Come on, gay maker, let's have it. Will you stop calling me a gay maker? I am not a gay maker. 
Nor am I the bender sender, the queer engineer, the bum whisperer, that was good, uh, the fruitcake baker, or the promo of homo. All right, point made. <laughs> His name is Victor, and I met him at the show today. He's his answer. <laughs> oh, for fuck's sake! So he makes a living doing modern jazz tap wearing a chiffon blouse. You shouldn't just assume he's gay, Richard. That's really narrow-minded. Well, good luck with it. But seriously, if by some miracle he's not, just make sure you stay away from any hippo enclosures, all right? <laughs> <gasps> oh, don't you look cutie, Forty? <laughs> Nearly ready. There's just one thing I have to do to you. Um, come up to the bedroom for a minute. Your face, you're ready to blame The first guy in line to catch the train I'll say Thanks for doing this. Uh, I would have got a teenage girl to do it, but, well, the rich floating around, it'd be like throwing a baby seal into a shark tank. <laughs> right, Henry's feeds are in the fridge, and I've expressed enough milk for the night. Well, I'm trying to wean him off breast milk, but I can't keep him away from them. <laughs> Day in, day out, chomping away at my boobs. Yeah. It's like my nipples in his mouth every five minutes at the moment. <laughs> really? You lucky little bastard. That'll be him. Right. I'll see you both when I get back. Mwah. Wish me luck. You never know. This might be the start of something pretty big. <sighs> Fuck it. There we go. Now you look like a proper panda. <gasps> <laughs> I can't do the belt up over this thing. Oh, God. Well, we should stop complaining about every little thing. It's a fucking seatbelt. Shut up. I'm leaving here, getting out of this place. Leaving here, getting out of this place. My certain kinds of pieces can take me. You've done the colours wrong. I'm like a panda bearing negative. No, 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 that's what pandas look like. Not only do I look ridiculous, I'm factually inaccurate. You look like a panda, end of story. Badger! No, a panda! Badger! <laughs> No, no, I, I'm OK. My neck hurts, but the suit took the brunt of it. Not you, the poor uh, It's not dead. Hurrah! But I think I clipped it. Its back legs are all funny and it's making this weird noise. You need to like... put it out of its misery. You mean kill it? It's the only humane thing to do. Well, what the hell will I use? Have you got something heavy like a spade? Who carries a speed around with them? Look, you need to smash it on the back of the head, quick and painless. Smash its head in? I can't do that. You do it. You are disgustingly selfish. And you are a complete... What? Hold <laughs> on a minute. I can't hear what you're saying. The airbag's in the way. Here, enough of this. No, don't. Oh, don't for fuck's sake, stop being such a oh, my child. My neck. My neck. <sighs> there, done. <sighs> Oh, great. That's it. Pass out, why don't you? What about the poor badger? Spade. Smash. Oh. Oh. Hi. Yes, this is an emergency. I need a minicab right away. I have a party to get to. Yeah! The 
Rebecca, hi. Well, I'm just feeding him now, actually. Mm. Yeah, it's all fine here. It's great. Cheers, then. Bye. <laughs> Let's have a look at you. You're a little bit concussed. <sighs> You're a very lucky man. That passerby hasn't been walking his dog. You could have been out here all night. I'm going to have to cut you out of this suit so the paramedics can move you. <sighs> Should probably phone someone in your family. Who do you want me to phone for you? Lindsay. I need to call Lindsay. Lindsay, no. God, no. Dick, now I don't want you to freak out about this. You have got to be shitting me. Who does this kind of thing in the 21st century? Who thinks this is acceptable? Me for f uh, Dick, chill. I know. This guy's clearly some kind of shit for brains racist bigot who thinks this kind of crap is funny, but we can't pick and choose who we help or as bad as them. Oh. Say, did you notice that as we were pulling up? What? It looked like a dead badger. Spade! Smash its head in! Right, you keep that fucking shit to yourself, or I, or I swear to God. Forget it, eh? We're not here to judge, man. We're here to save life. Kill him! Get the spade! You ought to be ashamed of yourself, mate. If it was up to me, I'd have left you there to rot. Excuse me. I'm looking for Rob Black. I'm a family friend. Duncan! <laughs> hey, Marty! How's it going? <laughs> hey, Dick! Hey, How's that ambulance I donated treating you? Uh, it's great, mate. I mean, it's not just treating us, it's helping us treat the community, you know? I just wish more people were caring like you. <laughs> it's not about me today. How's poor Rob? He's a, f a friend of yours? Well, he's more a friend of mine, really. Well, he's fine, but there's something you ought to know before you see his face. Oh, my God. Is he disfigured? Is he burnt? No, he's, um... I, I don't know how to put this. He's... He's wearing black face paint, black paint. He's painted black like a racist. What? It was absolutely disgusting, and... Uh, chill! Honestly, he's not a racist. <laughs> We're not here to judge, miss. We're here to save lives. Lindsay? Jesus, you really want to know if I'm bringing a guest? <sighs> How are you feeling? I've nearly died so my brother could have sex. Offended almost every member of the emergency services by accident, unless I'm sorely mistaken, I've just heard Duncan from Blue's voice outside, so... Yeah, not a bad evening all round, really. Oh. And what's with the face paint? Meant to be a panda. The colours are the wrong way round. At last! Thank you, that's what I said. Get some rest, yeah? Oh. So, guys, we're in hospital. We've got to keep it down just a little bit. Is Rob all right? Can we see him? Is he awake? Bex, you might want to spend a moment with him alone. Was it bad? It's not good. Uh, I'll, I'll wait outside. You go ahead. Okay. You're right. Hi, Duncan. <laughs> Duncan James. Yeah. Oh, it's an honor to meet you. Yeah, I'm a massive fan. <laughs> I loved you in Chicago. Yeah, I saw it seven times. <laughs> <laughs> I meant to be a panda. Well, you look like a fucking minstrel. Can you imagine if Vic had seen you? So is he gay or what? I'll never find out if he claps eyes on you, Dunlop, like a bloody idiot. Look, I have not been out with a man for 12 months, Robert. You are not ruining this for me. I will not be branded the girl related to a comedy 1970s racist. Ah! Oh, bad, sir. Oh, that's it. Bad oh, yeah, that's it. Right, that. Lovely. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, um, 
Is everything all right? Well, no, it's not really all right, no, but he'll live. Whoa, did you hear that, guys? We're gonna make it! Woo! Yes! Yeah, baby! <laughs> Out of my way, please see my brother. Is he alright? Is Rob alright? I came from the party as soon as I heard. Yeah, this is my other brother, Rich. Hi, mate. Rich, what the fuck are you wearing? What? It's a bad taste fancy dress party. He got second prize. So you think this is an acceptable way to walk around, do you? Oi, I'm being ironic, you puff. So you're homophobic as well? Huh. Why don't you just wear a swastika, man? My brother wouldn't let me. You know, your kind make me fucking sick. I haven't got time for this right now. Wait, Vic! You must be Vic. That kind of thing just isn't acceptable. It might seem like fun to you, but it's hurtful to others and it causes so much hate and pain in the world. But we're all the same inside. Why can't we just get along? <laughs> Why can't we all just get along? Such wisdom. And if you or anyone you know has been affected by any of the issues raised by today's programme, we have a special helpline. Oh, my. Line. There's a special helpline. <laughs> oh. oh, it just gets better and better. Please, turn it off. <laughs> what I will tell happened just the other day. I must confess, cause I've had about enough. I need your help, gotta make this here thing stop. Baby, I swear, tell the truth about all the things we used to do. This is my ex-girlfriend, Lindsay. That is Duncan from Blue. She dumped me for him, and now they're getting married. And to make matters worse, I'm not only invited, but it's going to be on the telly as well. Come on! Woo! The bastards. My name's Rob Black, and I need a plus one. And a bloody good lawyer. It all started about five days back. So then Paul asks me, do you reckon Siamese twins ever get off with each other? <laughs> Paul's so funny. What, even when he's expressing a genuine interest in whether a hermaphrodite can get themselves pregnant? Yeah. He's, uh, what's the word? Quirky. He's good looking too. I hate this Ibiza chill out wank. Let's get some summer vibes going. We were listening to that. Don't sound so enthusiastic. You should be proud. You produced this record. Yeah, but I'm not a real record producer. I just put names on a spreadsheet. I don't know what you're manning about. I mean, you get to hang out with birds who look like that all day. No, I don't. I never meet the models. The covers are all dealt with by the graphics department. Well, do you know anyone in the graphics department? Laura. What? Laura, as in the girl who sits right next to you for 40 hours a week, Laura? Yeah. Bruv! <laughs> You are currently busting your balls to try and find an incredibly beautiful woman to take to Lindsay's wedding, right? Right. That 
is an incredibly beautiful woman, yes? Yes. Now, if you can't figure out a way to meet her, then you, Robert, do not deserve to own a penis. He's got a point. No! No way! I'm not arranging a photo shoot just so you can meet this model. But you're asking me to be your pimp. No, I'm not doing it. I'm not setting this up for you. It's good of Lloyd to set this up for you. She's a good girl. Yeah, yeah, she is. So, you two have shared a moment. How do you mean? <laughs> well, have you ever been with her and felt a certain fritzel? Fritzel? It means a sexy shiver in French. You've got to expand your horizons, Rob. Yeah, girls are like a linguist. I've got some German for you. Observe. Was ist hier in der Nähe? Mein Lieblingsgruppe ist Brass. Samstags arbeite ich als Tankwart. Hmm, German's hardly the international language of love, though, is it, Paul? Still, I, I can't deny it was impressive, I suppose. Danke. Ich habe eine Meerschweinchen. What did all that mean, then? What is there in the neighbourhood? My favourite group is Bross. On Saturdays, I work as a petrol pump attendant. Then I just thanked you and told you I have a guinea pig. Anyway, come on. Free song. No, of course not. I, I work with her every day. You know? She's a mate. <laughs> it's a ridiculous question. Why? She's a good-looking girl. She's funny. She's clever. You get on with her. More importantly, she tolerates you. Not so much as one, huh? Sexy thought? No. OK, um... Imagine Anton Deck. Yeah. An award-winning double act, loved by millions, working together in perfect harmony to put on a crowd-pleasing performance every week. Just like you and her making crap compilation albums, though. Yeah, exactly like that. Now, imagine if Ant fucks Deck this Friday night. All that... Awkwardness will give the next Saturday takeaway a whole different vibe, don't you think? Gentlemen, may I present our model today, Amy. Now, she is an incredibly beautiful woman. Hey, Rob, it's the ultimate Lindsay is shit collection. 41 dance floor fillers to remind you why this model is just loads better looking than your ex-girlfriend. Including such pumping hard house classics as Lindsay's got a fat ass. Lindsay can resemble a tortoise from certain angles. And an exclusive remix of the Euro Club Smasher, Lindsay looks a bit like a lesbian with that haircut. Available in your head now. So, Rob, what big acts have you worked with? Um, wait, you know, just, um, people? Stop being so modest, Rob. He's worked with all the greats. Have you ever worked with Kylie? Yeah, yeah we've kind of, um, done some stuff. Wow, who else? Come on, Rob, tell her. Um, Will Young? Take that. Yeah, and some other bands who are, you know, a bit shit, really. Have you ever worked with Jamelia? I love Jamelia. Has no, Rob worked with Jamelia? That's like saying, has Ant worked with Deck? They're practically best friends. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know that one she did with Chris Martin? Rob produced the album with that on. Ooh. Oh my God, that is such a great track. Yeah, that was one of Rob's best. Haunting, evocative, the quintessential Rob sound, you might say. <laughs> well, it is an honour to meet you. That is such a wicked song. Well, I can't take all the credit. <laughs> oh, you should, Rob, you should. But give it a wild animal! Done. Yeah. <laughs> you happy? Yes. Um, <laughs> you were great. Thank you. Hey, listen, Rob, I was thinking, you know, I'm a singer too. Are you now? <laughs> yeah, and I would really like your opinion on my sound. I don't want to be too forward or anything, but my friend's got a club night in King's Cross on Saturday. You know, why don't we get together and, you know, talk music? Do you know what? I would really love that. Thanks, Emily. <laughs> Sedate. And you too, Laura. Yeah, sure, I'd love to come. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Great. <laughs> What are you coming for? Uh, because I was asked. Yeah, but that's not part of the plan. Come on, Rob. There wouldn't be a plan without me. Yeah, OK. All right. 
Do me a favour. Don't spend all night telling Amy I'm the second coming. It's embarrassing. Hey, it was me bigging you up that sealed the deal. And besides, you'd make an excellent Jesus. Oh, Rob! Great to see ya. Can I have a quick word? Sure. Please forgive me, Rob, for I have sinned. As a young boy, I'd often videotape gladiators, specifically to wank over Jet on the Travelator. She was fit. Yeah. Carry on. And on tour with Blue for a laugh, I'd often shit in Anthony Costa's suitcase. You are forgiven, my son. Oh, thanks, Rob. Forgive me, Rob, for I too have sinned. When you and I were together, I used to fantasize about other men when we were making love. Hmm? Especially your brother Richard. Oh, fuck. I also told all the girls in the office about that weird bend in your penis. And when you used to call, they'd say, banana cocks on line one, and laugh. Did you set this whole thing up just so you can take the piss out of me? Pretty much. Cheers. So, are you going to try and pull her at the clear? No. Look, all I want out of this is a date who'll turn heads at the wedding. She ticks that box perfectly. I've told you before, throw sex in there as well, and it all just gets messy. Oh, yeah, yeah, sex is so messy. Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, Rob, I want you to smell me in chocolate, yeah? Oh, oh, mmm, 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 so messy. Oh, oh, I have a twixed finger, yeah? Mmm, 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 mmm. Coffee? I don't get you. One minute you're happy you've got the date, the next you've got a face like a smacked ass about it. Where's the beef? You eat a buff. There is no buff. Beef. Look, I'm really happy about Amy. She's a beautiful looking woman, but. I think me and Laura might have had a moment. <laughs> I knew it. No, but I don't even know if it really was a moment. The only reason I think it might have been a moment is because you were talking about moments and... Uh, what happened? Well, nothing happened as such. I just sort of... looked at her differently. Do you know what I mean? Did she look at you differently? No, not in the slightest. I mean, I had a moment. I'm pretty sure she didn't. What did you have? A Twix. Uh, it's not the most erotic of chocolate bars, the Twix. <laughs> You'd be surprised. Now, the Kit Kat. There is one sexy fucking chocolate bar, right there. Paul, focus. Did I ever tell you I wanted a shag a midget? What's that got to do with anything? I'm trying to get you to face your feelings. You can't just ignore these unexpected desires you're having and lead you up inside. Oh, so that means you're going to shag a midget then? No. But it means I'm comfortable with the idea of shagging a midget. And that means, you know, the right midget came along. I wouldn't necessarily say no. Well, I'd have to say no to my midget. Which one of them's your midget again, just to be clear? Laura! I don't even know if she really is my midget. It's... Actually, mate, can we just fuck this whole midget thing off? It's getting well confusing. Sure. The bottom line is, Amy is a model, yeah? She's exciting, she'll impress everyone. I can't take Laura to the wedding. I work with Laura. Lindsay's met her, it's, you know, it's, it's Laura. Look, just go out tomorrow. Hang up with the pair of them. See how you feel after that. Look, tell you what, I'll even lend you my cup. Really? Why? So you don't get pissed, do anything rash. Go on, I trust you. Just owe me one. You're fine.
cheers, mate. I'm really not going to let you shag my sister, you know. Besides, she's too tall for you anyway. The thing about Duncan, we're not just lovers, we're best friends too. We're compatible on every level, especially sexually. Some of the things she does to me was like, wow. No, seriously, wow. <laughs> Freaky. Trippy. Nasty. Guys, if you ever meet a woman you can spend every single day with and still see something new in her, you ought to snap her up and never let her go. Robert, what do you mean you're not going to try it on with her? Exactly that. But, but, look at her. She's a model. So? So, she's a model. If a girl that far out of his league invites him to a club, repeat that she invites him and he's not going to try it on with her. It's just rude. It's like giving a tramp a 50 pound note and turns around and wipes his ass with it. Bruv, forget the wedding. You could shag a model here. Rich, has it ever struck you that I might not want to shag a model? Sweet Jesus, what is wrong with you? Not everyone is as sex obsessed as you, Richard. Fuck off. Everyone's as sex obsessed as me. I'm not. Of course you're not, you're a gay maker. Anyway, this isn't about you, it's about him. Right. So what I reckon the problem is, you're scared to see this model in a sexual context in case you fancy her and she rejects you when you try it on with her. Thereby bringing back the pain of Lindsay's rejection. Bloody hell, Richard. That's almost intelligent and well-reasoned. I am a teacher, Rebecca. You teach PE. Same thing happened to that fit bird with the tits on Hollyoaks. Ah, I see. Well, you're wrong, Rich. It's all very simple. I've got a plan and I'm sticking to it. I'm in this to get a date for that bloody wedding. I am not in this to have sex, nor am I in this to have fun. You're not going to use that as an opening line, are you? So I've got a manager and I'm working on my demo right now and it's a really creative environment. And I've got my own blog, which is really cool. Great. I'll um, give that a read sometime. I'd really like your opinion on my lyrics. Hi, guys. Really in club, huh? Bloody hell, Laura. You scrub up all right, don't you? You look amazing. Oh, this old thing? <laughs> oh, no. Oh, go on. No, I, I'd love to, but I'm, I'm driving. Well, I'm going to have to think of something else I can do to uh, make you lose your inhibitions. I need my inhibitions in full working order. Thanks. Oh, my friend's over there. I'll be back in a minute. How's it going with Amy? You going to ask her for a dance? No, no, I'm not, not really in the mood for dancing tonight. Oh, Jesus, come on, it's easy. <laughs> <laughs> come on. No, no, no. Come on. Feel the rhythm. <laughs> there you go. What? <laughs> Rob. What? It's Jamelia. What about her? Oh, introduce me. Introduce me to Jamelia. Introduce you. You did that album with her. Oh, please, introduce me to Jamelia. Have you ever worked with Jamelia? No. Has I, Rob I, I, worked I, with Jamelia? They're practically best friends. I'm going to go to the ladies, and I'll be back in a minute, and then I want an intro, OK? I won't embarrass you, I promise. What do I do? It's fucking Germania! It's fucking Germania! Help me! Help me! Um, okay, uh, think. Um, right, I'll fall to the floor. You say I've had a stroke. Ah, oh, but then why isn't Jamelia helping her best friend? She's a heartless bitch. Oh, it'll never play. Fuck it. Look, Rob, you've got two options here. One, tell Amy it was all a lie and you live in a fantasy world. But then she'll never go to the wedding with you. Option two? You go and ask Jamelia for help. Fuck off, she'll think I'm mental. Are you mental? Why would you tell her that? It's a very long story, but please, can you just help me out and pretend that you know me? No! Listen, I love your music. I j Hi. Oh, my God. Hi, I'm, I'm Amy. I'm a massive fan of your work. I'm a singer, too. 
you are an inspiration. Oh, thank you so much, Amy. That's really kind of you. Rob told me you've worked together. Yeah, yes, we did, we did. Uh, he's a real laugh, aren't you, Rob? I mean, we had a great time working together. <laughs> yes, we did, we did. Rob's amazingly talented, great dancer. In fact, Rob did this really full-on break dancing thing. Chris Martin thought it was brilliant. But has he not shown you the dance? No. Go on, show me the dance. Show her the dance. Go on, Rob. Show her the dance. Yeah, I don't really remember how it goes. Sure you do, Rob. You know that dance you did all those times when you worked with me and Chris. All those times we worked together. Rob, I... Rob don't make me look like a liar in front of Amy. I'm waiting, Rob. before in my life. Uh -huh. oh. Oh, no, no, that's not my fault! Uh, Tremelia made me do it! Uh, uh. Go away! Laura, this is ridiculous! Ridiculous? You just kicked me in the face! But it was an accident! It was Tremelia's fault! After all the things I've done to help you out this week, this is how you repay me. You don't care at all, do you? What? I've realised there's something I've got to tell you, and it's not easy. Will it be easier or harder than kicking me in the face? Look, I don't want to say it to you. We've been stood out on the street all upset. Please, just get in the car, will you? <laughs> Robert Black, I'm arresting you for curb crawling and the solicitation of a woman for the purposes of prostitution. <laughs> Sex case. Did he do that to you, love? Yeah. What? You bastard. Oh, no, not like that. He didn't mean to. Yeah, they all tell the same story. Don't cover for him. He's kind of nothing but scum. Seriously, you've got this all wrong. No. You're the one that's got it all wrong, son. Oh, oh. You are such a fucking idiot. 
I'm so sorry. No, I had a great night. I was kicked in the face, was busted for prostitution, which is a first, then five hours in A&E. You know how to show a girl a good time, I will give you that. I'm so, so sorry. So can we safely assume you won't be taking Amy to the wedding? No, it's, um... Well, she wasn't really my type. Oh, well. Some things just aren't meant to happen. Yeah. Sometimes the moment just passes, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and what was it you were so desperate to tell me last night, anyway? Oh, it's oh, nothing. Um, it's just something about work. <laughs> Laura, have you booked the model yet for Ultimate Dance Anthems 9? What? This is my ex-girlfriend, Lindsay. That is Duncan from Blue. She dumped me for him, and now they're getting married. And to make matters worse, I'm not only invited, but it's going to be on the telly as well. Come on! Woo! The bastards. I need a plus one. And this is what you get for trying to pull a celebrity. Just... Guess who's in here? Why do I feel I'm going to hear the words from Blue any second? Lindsay and Duncan from Blue. Blue. Hello Magazine will be covering every step of the happy couple's journey to the altar. They've sold the wedding to Hello Magazine. Well, he is a celebrity. What's your problem? Laura, hello. It's in Hello Magazine. My mum reads Hello Magazine. Your mum reads Hello Magazine. My mum's dead. Oh, God, yeah, sorry. But if she was still with us, she would read Hello Magazine, just like the mums of everyone I've ever met read Hello Magazine. Hey, I was reading that. So now, not only do people watching telly get to see Duncan from Blue being more impressive than me, now everyone who reads this does too. Meaning millions of middle-aged women, bored office girls and ironic gays. Rob, with the best will in the world, when Hello run Duncan and Lindsay's wedding photos, no one will be looking at you. Do you know what? They would if I've got a celebrity with me. The wedding is in less than a fortnight. I don't know why I didn't think of this before. A celebrity plus one would be perfect. Well, it's not a bad idea. It's, it's, uh, it's unrealistic. It's ludicrous, actually. And it's impossible in any way to achieve, but it's not a bad idea. Look, come on, mate, work with me here, yeah? Think of a famous person I could take to the wedding. OK. Let's blue sky some names here. Liza Minnelli. What? No, no, no. Chewbacca. King Constantine of Greece. Yeah, stop taking the piss. Oh, it's impossible. You don't know any celebrities apart from Duncan from Blue. And he's busy that day. It can't be that hard to get hold of a celebrity, surely? A celebrity, look, Paul, it's a celebrity. Seriously, I'm telling you, Lisa Snow just went into the VIP room. I've got to go and say hello, surely. Oh, oh Robert, this is Lisa Snowden. One of the most beautiful women in Britain. And? And you've got a face like a balloon that someone shit in and punched really hard. Oh, cheers. Just saying what I see, mate. She's not just some random girl. She's a girl with George Clooney. And I know you. You're going to rock up to her and ask her to the bloody wedding, aren't you? All I'm going to do is stop by and say hello. If she wants to come to the wedding with me after that, well, who am I to argue? Hey, how you doing? I'm sorry. Oh, no, 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 you don't understand. Look, step aside, sir. Competition winner. Competition winner? Well, what the... Mm. 
it's any consolation, I am currently dying inside for you. Come a fucking tissue in the middle. So, to the question, how hard could it be to meet a celebrity, the answer is very. Oh, well, back to the drawing board. Oh, fuck. fuck. The wedding's under two weeks away, but amazingly, Duncan's still got time to care for others. Duncan, isn't that your first ever gold disc? The children need it more than me. Giving this away to the Music for Kids charity event. They'd asked if I could auction myself. You know, win a date with Duncan. But I'm just so busy elsewhere. Donating bone marrow. And besides, you're mine, mister. Hey, I sure am, baby. Hey, did they find anyone else to replace you for the auction? Yeah, Daniel Beddingfield. Really? Yeah. But still, for you guys out there with a few thousand pounds to spare, they're also auctioning off a date with top model Lisa Snowden. Now, what fella wouldn't mind one of the sexiest women in the world on his arm, eh? I love you, you ice-skating bastard! Hey, that's the kid from the other night. The competition winner. Here we go. Girls, now's your chance for a one-on-one -on -one with Daniel Beddingfield! Exclamation mark. Wow. An exclusive a cappella version of Gotta Get Through This. What a treat. Here we go. Guys, win the ultimate lads fantasy. A hotel room, a takeaway, a six-pack and Lisa Snowden! Three exclamation marks! presumably making her three times more desirable than Daniel Beddingfield. Mind you, chlamydia is three times more desirable than Daniel Beddingfield. <laughs> this is a genius idea! <laughs> but you do know this is never going to work. Why not? It's not a car boot sale. The tickets for the event cost £300, which kind of indicates that Rob here is not going to be able to snap up George Clooney's ex-girlfriend for a couple of quid. Yeah, good point. I can't afford to bid. Man, this is a shit idea! No, no, it's a brilliant idea! Forget about bidding for her. I can guarantee him quality one-to-one -one FaceTime with Lisa Snowden. He just needs one thing. And that one thing is... a competition winner. Don't worry, bruv. I'll sort it. I am a teacher. All right, bruv. You got the money? 100 quid, as requested. Well, he spent 300 on his ticket. I thought meeting the Snowden would be good enough for him. Well, she's good enough for me. She's about 10 years too old for you, isn't she? 12. I'll make an exception. She's a right piece of ass. She's definitely filed away for a rainy day. Yeah, I'm sure she'd be delighted to know she's made it into your wank bank, Richard, but can we just get on with business? Hey! Here you go, Craig. Are you going to go and fetch him? Fetch him? This is him. Right, mate. Hang on, you said he got a disability. He has. No, he hasn't. Mumps, when he was a nipper. 90% hearing impaired. Deaf as a post, one side. Watch. <laughs> See? Nothing. And he's got a list of allergies as long as your arm. Stung by a wasp? Bosh. He's down like a fucking bag of spuds. Eats a strawberry? <laughs> Shitting through the eye of a needle. No, 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 no. Sorry, sorry, this is a terrible idea. I can't believe I let you talk me into this, Rich. Craig, I am so sorry. Let's call the whole thing off. Forget I ever mentioned it, eh? Wait, wait, let's not be too hasty. I can borrow my nan's wheelchair and pretend I can't walk. What? I've done it before. Oh, Jesus, this is getting worse. Look, I don't think so, Craig. It's a kind offer, though. Yeah, cos you've got loads of other ways of meeting top models, haven't you? Look, mate, we might as well work together on this, cos you can fucking whistle if you think you're gonna get your money back. He's got a point. Yeah, I suppose so. Yeah, but it's going to cost you extra. I want a Nintendo DS as well. What? You've just had a hundred quid. You're pushing your luck. Well, if you want to be pushing my man's wheelchair, you have to get me a Nintendo DS, mate. you got a Murray spirit, haven't you? Oh, so now Lisa Snowden is your perfect woman, is she? Yep. Firstly, because she's a top international model. Secondly, because her ex-boyfriend is George Clooney. Lindsay's ex is, well, Lindsay's ex is me. So that means I win. So you win because you're a shitter ex boyfriend than George Clooney? Well, no, I, I wouldn't have put it quite like that, but um, yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. I'm surprised they didn't ask you to take the wedding pictures, Paul, just to really take that piss. What are you taking pictures of her for, anyway? It's for little Henry. Hmm. Paul's making an album that... What was it? Well, it's an album that captures the reality of... That captures the reality of Henry's first year. You know, reporting on the war between mother and infant, the give and the take, and the sharing of your most intimate self, both mentally and physically, with the person you love the most. That's it. Wow, that's, um... deep. Rebecca looks amazing in the picture. And have one, hey? Yeah, mate, can I have a word in the kitchen? You are taking photos of my sister breastfeeding. No, I am capturing the reality of Henry's first year. I'm reporting yeah, on... Yeah, yeah, I can see what you're saying in theory, but in reality, you're just taking photos of my sister's debts. It's for Henry to look back on in years to come. Well, I don't know about you, Paul, but I can think of nothing that I, as a grown man, want to do less than look at a book full of pictures of my mum's tits, and neither will Henry. Unless there's something very, very fucking wrong with him. It's a very narrow-minded view, Robert. I know your game, Paul. Oi, oi! Here we are, the stars of the show. All right, bruv. All right, Paul. All right, All right Sis. All right, Henry. Why are you taking Rich? You hate going out with Rich. True. But Rich is Craig's teacher. I am a grown man who's just handed over cash and computer games to a young boy to make him spend the evening with me. I might as well be wearing a huge flashing neon sign saying pervert, but Rich makes all of this technically, um, OK. Hmm. The worrying word in that sentence is technically, closely followed by pervert. I'm sorry, sir, it's not gonna happen. I'm with them. Competition winner. Thank you. Fucking hell. Kid's like a Jedi mind trick. That's uh, the organizer. Excuse me. The people out front said you might be able to help my little friend Craig here. Say hello, Craig. All right. Poor love. Is he a competition winner? He's a very brave lad, is what he is. And he's also a massive fan of Lisa. And, uh, do you think that Craig could meet her? Oh, it'd mean the absolute world to him. Oh, I'd love to help. But she's already gone. She had a premiere to get to tonight. Fuck. Sorry? Oh, oh. oh. Craig, uh, he'll be devastated. Oh. oh, Daniel Beddingfield's free for a chance. OK, if you wait there a second, I'll find you a signed picture of Lisa. Yeah, OK, cheers. Hi, you're the guy who won Lisa in the auction, aren't you? Mm. Um, here's a contract, just give it a quick once over, yeah? Right, we might as well go home. In a minute. She's coming back with a signed picture. I don't want it. Let's just go home. Yeah, well, I want it, all right. Oh, you dirty sod. Are you going to crack one out over it? What? No. I want it so I can flog it on eBay. Where does it say I get to knob her? <laughs> <laughs> what a couple of pricks. You going to stand for this, bruv? After all we've been through, owned by a cock jockey like that. Well, there's not a great deal I can do about it. Unless you've got £12,001 spare I can outbid him with. Don't be a knob, I've got another idea. It's gonna cost you 20 quid. Unbelievable. I just wanted to say thank you so much. What? I say I think we should be thanking you, really. Shouldn't we, Craig? For all the money you've donated towards helping the sick kiddies. Say thank you, Craig. Thank you, sir. Are we going to meet Miss Lisa now? Did we win, Mr. Robert? No, we didn't win. 
Craig, we're not going to meet her, but maybe you'll get to meet her next year. If there is a next year. Well, does he have long? Long is relative at this stage. Every minute is a blessing how we see it. So what's wrong with you, little fella? Well, it all started when I was four. There you go. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ, that's terrible. Come on, Terrence, let the kid have her. Yeah. Yeah, 12 grand's chicken feed. And this kid really needs some cheering up. Yeah. There we go, little man. She's all yours. Fill your boots. <laughs> this means more to me than I can possibly begin to tell you. <laughs> Come on, Craig. Time to go. Oh, see you soon, Craig. Yes. Yes, you bloody well will. I fucking love you. What other totty have you got for me to buy? Oh, none, I'm afraid. But, uh, are you interested in Daniel Beddingfield at all? Mm. You do know you've got no guarantee that she'll go to the wedding with you. What if you don't get on? You know, what if she spends one hour with you and that's it? Ah, see, that's why I'm taking Craig. No megastar's gonna brush off a competition winner, are they? The <laughs> madness continues. So, I'm convinced that I can make her my new best friend. And what do you do with a best friend? You go to a wedding with them. That's what. And do you, Duncan from Blue, take this woman to be your lawful wedded wife? I... Bearing in mind, She's no Lisa Snowden, is she? Hmm. Good point. After all, not only is Lisa a top international model, TV presenter, and tireless charity campaigner, she encouraged me to eat Special K as well. In fact, I've lost three stone thanks to her. And don't forget, she was voted one of the sexiest women in the world by FHM for an astonishing ten years. Which is a lot more than you can say for my Lindsay. Well, marrying her or not, your call, matey. I do. But I want you to know that compared to Rob's day, I find you very disappointing. <laughs> Rob, you do know none of this is actually going to happen, don't you? Rebecca, the wedding is ten days away. Right now, I'll try anything. Mm, Rob, have you ever thought of trying not being a twat? Rebecca, I'm afraid that is not an option. Hi. Hi. Oh, my God. It's actually Lisa Snowden. I could actually get my Celebrity Plus One here. Be cool, Rob. Hi, Rob. I'm Lisa. Be cool. Thanks for coming. Play it cool. Hello. This must be Craig. It's lovely to meet you, Craig. You are such an inspiration. So brave. So brave. So, Craig, tell me about yourself. Well, it all started when I was four. And there you go. <sighs> Jesus Christ. That's terrible. Isn't it? Tablet time. Come on, Craig, into the bathroom. <laughs> it's just um, uh, on the left there. Great. Now look, Craig, help me out here, mate. We've been here for 20 minutes now and I've said about 10 words to her. It's not my fault you're not slick with the ladies. Don't give me that. It's hard to start talking about me when you're sat there coughing and milking the sympathy vote. Yeah, well, I'm not well, am I? Yes, yes you are. I'm the one who's suffering here. All right then, what do you want me to do? Bring the conversation round to me. Close together. It's lovely. Brilliant. So Craig tells me that your brother's one of his teachers. Yes. Yes, he is. 
So good of Rob to give his time up like this. Hey, I'm just that kind of guy. <laughs> Um, soon be done, Lisa. Um, just a few of Craig eating, please. Uh, food actually in your mouth, please. I'm not eating it. It's cold. Craig, don't be rude. Here you go. They're lovely. That's great. Is this got peanuts in it? I'm allergic. What are you doing? I'm allergic to peanuts, you fucking cop. I'm going to puke on you in a second, you prick. No, let's get you to the bathroom, little fella. Uh, is, there, is there anything we can do? No, 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 no. You guys stay here. We'll, uh, we really need just to be alone. Just started having a conversation. What the fuck do you think you're doing? Throwing up. Are you guys all right in there? Oh, yes, thank you. Just, um, cleaning the vomit out of Craig's tyres. Please, please get back in the chair. Everything all right? Yeah, yeah, just, I'm just, um, wiping down Craig's spokes. Um, I'm ever so sorry, but Lisa's got to attend Stella McCartney's autumn launch party, so she's had to go. Oh, fuck! Really sorry about the anaphylactic shock, Craig. Um, look, it's been a terrible night. Lisa feels awful about this, so, um... She's asked if you'd be so kind as to let her buy you lunch tomorrow at the Ivy. Lisa's shout. No peanuts, I promise. <sighs> I can't come on at school. But Rob's not. Rob can take her out on his own. Excellent. Oh, that'll make her really happy. So, uh, oh, I'll call you with the details, Rob. Yeah. It's a date. Yeah. You're gonna get me a Nintendo Wii for this one, you fucker. Do I look all right? You look fine. Just do me one favour. When you're with her, don't mention the wedding. <laughs> oh, my Ooh. God! Duncan from Blue is marrying your ex, and they've invited you. That's outrageous. I know. Oh, I really know. Look, sorry about this. Let's just give them a couple of shots of us, otherwise they'll chase us down the street. Just a couple of shots, all right, guys? Then we have to go. Just smile, it'll be over in a minute. Thank you so much for lunch. Honestly, my pleasure. But seriously, I can't believe how insensitive Duncan and your ex are. I'll tell you what, take me as your guest. I know what you're thinking. This is one of his little fantasies. But do you know what? I'll be your plus one. Take me, come on. We'll get them back from missing you around. We'll hog all the wedding photos. It'll be really funny. <laughs> this really is happening. Please take me as your wedding guest. Well, if you do insist. Jesus hates Christ! Oh, I think with Lisa went well, then. When no one else can... Oh, it's you! I know who she is, so you're Rob Black. Yes? What are you doing giving my boy money and presents like this? Are you grooming him? Go on, Craig, it'll be our little secret. What? Oh, uh, you're Craig's mum. Oh, right, no. Rob's just been helping him out, haven't you, Rob? Oh, come on, love, I wasn't born yesterday. He's a sicko. How dare you? This man does more for children than you could ever possibly imagine. More, two children more, like? He's a sex case! Honestly, there's been a complete misunderstanding. Well, how come when he came home last night, he stank of beer and had weird stains on his trousers? He just knocked over a takeaway. Nothing else happened. Tell them, Lisa. Craig? You can walk? Oh, shit! I couldn't explain. He made me do it so you'd like it. Date with Lisa went well then. Oh, and you can fuck off as well. Hey, Rob. Maybe you could invite Daniel Beddingfield. <laughs> <laughs>
This is Hello, my name is Tim Allsop. And my name is Stuart Williams. We are the writers and creators of Plus One. But much like any televisual endeavour, we are not alone in bringing this to the screen, are we, Tim? No, we're not. So we want to use this opportunity to thank our commissioning editors, uh, Darren Smith, Shane Allen and Andrew Newman at Channel 4. And we'd also like to thank our agent, uh, Lisa Tugard, who provided us with many, many, many very good notes, many very good suggestions about casting, and is a very lovely woman. And our producer, Matthew Bird, our director, Sarah Gorman, and our executive producer, Derek Wax. And here we are with our first to camera scene from Rob Black, aka Danny Mays. As you'll see, he's holding a knife. Uh, originally, uh, that kind of got lost in rewrites and and the shooting. Uh, there was meant to be some ambiguity about who had been stabbed and why. Yeah, was uh, was the fact that he'd found out that his best friend was having sex with his sister. Was that going to be the reason? Was it going to be the fact that uh, he couldn't take Duncan anymore, Miranda? But we sort of just that just sort of went away. But we do like it as an opening. Yeah, it's uh, visually arresting, I think would be the phrase. And here we have uh, Ingrid as Rebecca and Steve John as Paul. And the sort of one nice love arc we have for the series, really. This is the point at which we now know that they have got together and they are now a couple, which is quite sweet that two such sort of odd characters have found happiness. But yeah, we, 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 thought, like it. we thought it'd be quite nice to actually have one functional relationship in the show, didn't we? Yeah. Beyond Duncan and Lindsay's, which, as we will see, isn't as functional as you think. However, we do now come to one of the most uncomfortable scenes for us. Um, Ingrid, uh, Rebecca, is a good friend of ours. And when we wrote this, we hadn't thought that actually having to see her pretending to have sex would yeah, just for, be really horrible. For some reason, uh, I mean, we're all adults here. We're, we're, we're not prudish school children. But we felt deeply uncomfortable, yeah. didn't we? We felt um, deeply uncomfortable. Sort of compounded by the fact Ingrid also appeared in Peep Show on Channel 4 the night before yes. in a sex scene. So Friday night, we have to see Ingrid on television having sex. Saturday morning, we see Ingrid having sex. Frankly, the fact we didn't get to see her having sex on Sunday was quite a godsend for us, wasn't it? Yeah, yes, it was. Um, <clears throat> there used to be an enormous slab of dialogue at this point here about uh, about how shit the band The Feeling are. And we don't know the feeling personally. We have no beef with them as people. I'm sure they're lovely men. But my God, their music's appalling. For some reason, we we chosen to to work out our feeling based demons during this bit. But again, in the edit, it, it was became un- apparent un- that it was unnecessary. unnecessary. I think the, the original edit of this came in at about sort of 37 minutes. So yeah. um, to be honest, our angst with the feeling kind of had to go. Right, now this scene is leading up to one of our favourite fantasy scenes, which is the Trisha fantasy scene. Now, this fantasy was actually shot for episode two, Two. I believe. Uh, It's meant to come, well, it was originally meant to come after. How could it possibly be worse, the fact that um, One Love, the show about Duncan and Lindsay, is on TV? At which point we jump out to this show, which is also on TV with Lindsay and Duncan, and it's worse because Duncan has, quote-unquote, done your sister, the girl you work with, and who's that old lady? Oh, that'll be your nan. But um, we we felt it didn't work for you. No, well it didn't work there. well there and work well uh, here. Um, of course, the fact we were going to get Trisha for a fantasy was always pretty much a lock-in because uh, Tim's dad um, is Trisha's executive producer. He doesn't. He is indeed. So, hello, Dad. Hello, Trisha. Uh, thank you both very much for doing it. Uh, always nice to keep these things in the family. Mm. I Trisha's think. like your second mom, isn't she? She is very much like my second well, mother. Mr. Trevor McDonald, he's like my second dad. Um, <laughs> I really like this bit here because it's sort of look at the anticipation on her face. She's thinking, "You're going to say me. You're going to say me." Then he doesn't, and you get the disappointment. Are we? This is the nearest we sort of get to a conventional attraction thing between them. Yeah. But I think we ought to point out to very much clarify. I don't. We don't think that Laura fancies Rob. We just no. think that she'd like to have been asked. Yeah, it's a sheer point of principle. She's been annoyed by the fact that she hasn't. And now we meet the woman who will be, and that is Georgia King. Very, very talented. Very, very funny. Um, very up and coming. Yes, she's, she's uh, doing a lot of work. Just like Georgia, star of uh, Wild Child, which you can probably by this stage now buy on DVD. Uh, it's well worth a purchase. And uh, Little Dorrit. Yeah, uh, she, um, not only was she talented, she's great fun to have around. Yeah, really, really, really good girl. And uh, I think this is this is sort of, in a way, one of our favourite scenes because sort of Ruth, uh, Laura, kind of looks so lovely there and Georgia looks so lovely. You've got that real sort of dichotomy for the character of Rob as to there's the woman he should be taking 
yeah. but he thinks that this woman's somehow more impressive. Well, so again, something that wasn't drastically important that we carried through the series, but originally we planned on all of the women that Rob doesn't have a sort of sexual urge towards have got dark hair, and all the women he fancies have got blonde hair, but we, we didn't carry that through. That would have been ridiculous to try and carry that through. Yeah. The, um, the This episode, episode five, uh, this is probably the only episode that we knew exactly what would happen in it from before we filmed the pilot. Yeah. Because we always wanted to have a finite point of the wedding that we're working towards. Yeah. And it's pretty much as is. Yeah. Except for in our original story plan, Duncan gets stabbed in the leg, not he the did. balls. The idea of him being stabbed in the balls came at the 11th hour from Darren Smith, one of our commissioners. And yep. you know what? It's a lot if, funny for it. Yeah, if it's a good gag, we don't care who, no. who chips it in, we'll chip it in. But yeah, this has, for, even down to the, you know, her dad uh, inventing toilet duck. Uh, I don't know why it's funny, but we we think it's funny. I just think it is quite... It's like it always amused me with um, Davinia Taylor that she sort of bought Supernova Heights back in the Britpop era and her dad just makes toilet paper we wanted the scenes with um, Astrid and Rob to be sort of just about believable we wanted you to think oh she's his perfect woman for this reason this reason and this reason much like when we did the um, the dancing scene in episode 3 we didn't want it to be we wanted you to think hmm this is going to go terribly wrong because Rob can't dance and then he can dance so but it still goes terribly yeah, yeah. it still goes terribly wrong so we want you to think well, hang on she's his perfect woman Oh, Jesus, something very, very yep. bad and wrong is going to occur. And then you've got to try and guess what it is. <laughs> ah, this bit. The This was... Uh, the unfortunate thing for Danny here was that his wife and child had just arrived on set at, I think, probably the most unpleasant moment yeah. in the entire series. The, his the, infant child in... Yeah, the point at which Daddy's screaming the word motherfucker is the, time that, is the time that Mays Jr. Uh, Brandishing a gun is the time that Mays Jr. appears on set. <laughs> but that's fair enough. I mean, uh, I think it's also worth saying here what a superb job the both locations team and Sarah the director did here because you've just got that beautiful view over the Millennium Dome in the background. Yeah, it looks and amazing, doesn't it? It really, really does. There's that sort of slight amber glow on everything as well. Yeah, it's Sarah that, did an exceptional job. Yeah, everything's just sort of come together for Rob here. It looks lovely. She's lovely. Even though he's behaving a bit like an idiot, it's still lovely. Now, this scene was originally meant to build on the idea of Rebecca as the quote-unquote game maker that we had in episode two and that sort of followed through yep. ambiently throughout the throughout the rest of the series. Um, but we also shot an extra scene that has been dropped. There was more dialogue from the end of this scene that was dropped. Which we are to assume will be on the deleted scenes. We, we don't would assume know. they're on deleted scenes. Um, but it sort of glossed over the idea of Rebecca being a game maker. And yeah. it's something that should we be gifted with a series two, and we may not, it's something we'll explore at greater depth because we think we could get some great, great stuff out of Steve John there. Yeah, very Great much stuff. So. Back to Toilet Duck again. That got one of the largest laughs on the floor of anything we shot for the entire uh, yeah, series. Absolutely. Toilet I don't know why they are. Toilet Duck is just somehow funny. There is obviously something about this Toilet Duck that is intrinsically amusing. And that thing there about irritable bowel syndrome. Oddly enough, when Tim and I first met, we were both suffering from irritable bowel syndrome. A little behind the scenes fact there. Yeah. Um, this is quite nice. We, If you see, saw our commentary for the pilot we don't see rob on a date at any point this is the one moment and this isn't really a date per se but it's the one time we get to see rob with ladies and that he's being so unslick with her yet she's yeah. kind of going for him yeah it's just sort of really really nice maybe a bit of uh hard to handle there in, in fact in in real life one of my favorite songs but neither of us had a hand in getting this on the, on the show i'm just glad it's on there to be honest with you now, you'll see Rob's phone in a second, and there's a continuity error, because Lindsay's in capital letters, and there's a question mark on there, which wasn't on Laura's original text. But do you know what? You'd have to be exceptionally anal, or an absolute prick, which I, which I am both, to, <laughs> to have noticed that, but I thought I'd point it out before yes. anybody else does on some kind of nerdy internet forum. Um, Rob has absolutely everything at this point. You know, he's got the beautiful girl in bed. She's in this amazing house. And then we drop Da Bombshell. Yeah. That, uh, which we've been alluding to. Uh, yeah, in, in episode four, uh, when Rob walks in and sees Paul taking pictures of Rebecca, he's like, what are you taking pictures of her for? But prior to that, he says, <laughs> they might as well ask you to take the pictures at the wedding. And there's a little shared glance because, oh, good Lord, 
Um, they're all invited to the wedding, and as, as we'll discover later, Paul has been asked to take the pictures for the wedding. And there's a sort of implicit undercurrent yeah. that everybody else that Rob knows, all of his family and friends, have also been invited to the wedding, which... Uh, we just which, sort of thought would be the kind of the worst icing on the cake for him. If yeah. he knew from day one, you kind of lost, you've lost the fun of that. Whereas here, we end the part with... And everyone else you care about has also yeah, gone as well. Everybody's a love this um, this editor here, the editor who's sadly his name escapes me. And um, Sarah did a lovely, lovely, lovely thing with the editor here, where we see all three uh, in a sort of twenty four style yeah. three part split edit, um, which I love because every single actor in this show is so on their game. Yeah, we get to see all three just being brilliant. Yeah, the stuff that Steve John when he's when he gives the thumbs up for, yeah. um, for just puts his penis inside me it's very very funny and again testament to uh, to Duncan James here Duncan is brilliantly self aware yeah I like to think he pitches his performances in uh, the one love reality segments we have in the show just perfectly the sort of the cheesy wink he does at the end of this is... really got to stress as well that we weren't taking the piss out of Duncan we really were not making fun of Duncan in nice. the slightest it was after after the pilot I mean before the pilot we thought you know if he goes along with this he's, he's a good laugh but after the pilot we knew he was so willing to laugh at himself yeah. and his perceived and public image he has done as a result of that I think genuinely he's done the series no end of favours because we could take what we wanted to do with the Duncan parts and go a lot further because yeah. we knew he was happy for us to laugh at his public image yeah um He's a lovely, lovely man and very, very funny in this, and we are so much the richer for him being in it. Absolutely. Here we've Miranda. got. <clears throat> some... I love Miranda's costumes. Miranda's costumes are absolutely spot on. They sort of they've got that horrible sort of sub wag, sub Nicola T. Yeah. <laughs> style um, fashion, uh, which she gamefully rose to. And here's Duncan um... bringing a man back from the dead. Um, there was some debate uh, before we, we shot this whether it was too stupid, the idea that, that Duncan's brought a mammoth from the den. It's like, well, no. In in Plus One land, this is what Duncan does every day. Yeah. I mean, Duncan found a man who was suffering medical difficulties. Duncan did what he could to help. Yeah, he's just that kind of guy. Um, I'd also like to point out, I did try to buy that jacket at the end of the uh, series. Uh, yeah, but damn you, Duncan James, you bought that jacket. And I don't blame you, it's a good jacket. It's a good jacket. Um, um, I think George's performance here is Excellent. lovely because at this stage obviously we don't know she's a mental but I think with repeated viewing you can just see that kind of slight flaring of the eye that yeah. something's not quite little, right here little twitch of the nostril as well she's excellent Julia yeah. really really very funny do excuse me I have to powder my nose she's off to powder her nose now in the edit the bit where um, Georgia's slamming on the on the soap dispenser, it was in and it was out, and it was in yeah. and it was out. Because we weren't sure whether we wanted to that explicitly foreground look. She's probably a mental, but I think we kind of realised that you sort of knew something had to go wrong yeah, some, with her. We didn't know whether to give a clue something yeah. was going to go wrong was going to be funnier or. or but not. I think she's so sort of intensely, brilliantly loopy here that um, it's a good nostril flare um, that it's quite nice. But you still don't quite know how it's going to pan out no how it's going to pan out is inter incredibly badly mm. for Duncan's testicles at any rate but, uh, speaking of testicles uh, we're now going to move on to the biggest set of testicles not just on the set but possibly in Britain if not the world uh, the godlike uh, genius uh, the, the sexy beast that is Steve Jones Steve Jones is probably the most beautiful man I think anyone involved in this production has ever seen in their life. It um, was bizarre because Steve Jones came on set and it was as though somebody dropped a sex bomb and I don't mean that in a Tom Jones sense of the word it was like like hot napalm. Men um, and women alike were, were simply swooning at his feet. Everybody is... just fell in love with Steve Jones. There was a point at which Steve Jones was getting mic'd up and he got a sort of mic in a holster, like a shoulder holster. Yeah, like look, Starsky. Look at that, look at that jacket now. He didn't have the jacket didn't on. Didn't have the jacket on. Just got his arms raised in the air. He's being mic'd up by the sound department. And it was it was as though he had been perfectly posed to look amazing whilst being mic'd up. Yeah, it looked like James Bond with a shoulder holster. It was and... bizarre. It was it was a staggering effect. Myself and Ingrid were, were talking and we sort of started sidling up to Steve Jones like, teenage fans it was really weird 
Uh, but enough about our peculiar foibles and quirks. Um, Steve did a brilliant job. He I did think. indeed, as did Nigel coming up here. What I think is really, oh, really nice is yes. the, we had written in the, um, you know, I hope he's not going to make a big elaborate um, gesture like at the end of The Graduate. And Nigel just said, well, why don't I just make out like I've never seen it? And yeah, we, it just it, makes this scene so much funnier. Sad to not, uh, sad to admit this, but uh, we didn't write that. Never seen it. Uh, it's one of my favourite, yeah. my favourite Nigel lines. Nigel is brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Uh, he's got a fantastic comic timing, I think. Yeah, he does do. But there's another Mr. of, uh, uh, there's another of uh, Nigel's girlfriends. Of another course. of Nigel's girlfriends. Uh, but back to Mr. Jones. Now, uh, interestingly, the week before Steve came onto set, I was at a party, uh, which by chance. Duncan from Blue was at and Steve Jones was that and I hadn't met Steve at this point and somebody else uh, called me over and went Stuart this is Steve Steve this is Stuart he wrote plus one at which Steve Jones turned around and went oh right so you're the one who called me a sheep shagger then <laughs> and um, I just as I said well, what can you say to that really yeah. and here's Georgia in one of the lovely expensive cars now I know nothing about cars I know nothing about cars or football I'm fundamentally one of the village people <laughs> but um, I don't know anything about cars at all I can't drive I have no interest I don't know anything but Tim had write very specific car uh, makes and models car makes and models into the script so I later realised it's because it's nice cars Tim wanted to have a drive in that is just exceptionally shallow but it made me very very happy um, here we have one of my favourite moments from uh, this episode uh, which again is based on a sort of true life story. Yeah, um, I when I was at school, I went and out with Bound Course, and I actually did have diarrhoea in a canoe. Um, <laughs> but it's been a bit of sort of anecdotal shtick of mine for years. But I didn't really have diarrhoea in a canoe. Uh, do I need? To, shall I tell it? I had I uh, the day before we'd been mountain climbing. I'd been drinking water from mountain streams as advised by our uh, instructors. Got to the top of the mountain. There was a dead sheep in the stream. The next day, I had appalling diarrhoea didn't go in a canoe the day after that went in a canoe and there was the threat of, 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 of said uh, bell condition uh, never actually really did have diarrhea in a canoe um, but so it works go. very very well for the purpose of this yeah and it's, Danny coming back here and the way he delivers this I think is just lovely it's kind of this is Rob's absolute yeah. triumph Rob wins yeah if if it's a beautiful woman on his arm. She's invented toilet duck. She's a millionaire biochemist. Yeah. He's on television bragging about yeah. this. He's as impressive, technically speaking, yeah. as Duncan from Blue. And I think you said to me when we first watched this back, the way this is portrayed by Sarah, which is beautifully done, is it's like he's getting married now. Yeah. It's sort of like, you know, he's gone in, he's taken the deep breath, and this is his big moment rather than hers. Yeah. Here we go again, one of the uh, blue versions we've had um, we are specially composed this is the organ version again this is paying for um, <laughs> Leah Ryan's patio uh, there's a bit to bit to camera now from Rob uh, which when we wrote the first draft of this script was about a page and a half yeah. wasn't it an enormous soliloquy about love and relationships which when we got down to it we knew from the read through that we were running long so we yeah. chopped it down to a paragraph yeah. but we think we still get the idea across yeah uh, still he's, pretty much get the idea across this is it everything should be lovely you kind of probably know that something is going to go wrong but Rob is just at peace with the world yeah oh if only could, he knew what could possibly go wrong a bowie knife and Duncan's bollocks yeah that's coming up in a second. Let's barrel on, much like we do with the script, to uh, talk about what happens next. Next, uh, Georgia stabs Duncan in the balls, originally stabbed in the leg. Um, really quite interesting on the day, Duncan's stunt double uh, looked just enough like Duncan to look like Duncan had recently been in a fire. <laughs> it, was, uh, it was really disconcerting. There were like two Duncans. There was the real Duncan, then there was the Duncan that your mom had bought you off the market. It was uh, it was it was quite strange, and then we will uh, barrel on from Duncan here, stabbed at Don's La Testes, to Duncan on the stretcher with the paramedics. Uh, the return of our saw. paramedics. Yep, we first saw them in episode two. Um, this was a real treat for us when we were making it because um, uh, James and um, Daniel, who are the two paramedics, had never worked together before. We were both fans of their work individually. Put them together for these two characters. And the second the two of them got together, 
everyone on set assumed they were a double act that we'd plucked out and yeah, um, one of the one of in. the camera operators came up to us and said, "So how long have these two been out? Been a double act?" I'm like, "Yeah, about five minutes." Yeah. We love Daniel and James. They're sort of our our little bonus find for the series. We think um, very much so. And it's, James we, was previously an actor in his native Australia in Home and Away, oh, yeah. which we didn't know. Um, he he came in, auditioned, was brilliant. Uh, the read through, he read in for four or five missing cast members, and uh, he killed every single. I one. think, to be honest, as a result of that, we we further bumped the role up. Didn't yeah, we? we we put as much of them in as we could because we love what they do. Daniel is uh, very much an up and coming uh, talent. He performs with a comedy duo called Ginger and Black. With a girl called Erin Jackson. We are very, we are we are big fans of both those, and they're just lovely in this. And Duncan is so good in this you know and he's been this is kind of like his big episode really and i think the way he pitches this is just great because we'd always said even from the original pitch that we wrote and as stuart said earlier you know this episode we'd sort of had mapped out in our minds but was that the worst bit of this for rob is that duncan is disappointed in him because Duncan is such a 100% stand-up all around great guy that him being disappointed yeah. in you is the worst possible thing. You know, he's not going to shove you up against a wall and try and punch you. He's just going to look at you and just go, I'm very disappointed. And Duncan's just delivery of this is lovely and then obviously his, his poor there nana. There used to be, in the first draft of this, a really long scene outside of the church with with um, Lindsay's uncle Phil mm. where he explains in point by point detail how Rob has ruined the wedding and we used to have a lot of celebrity wedding guests yeah the, we, we'd written the crankies in we'd written Jeanette Cranky in there telling Robbie was a shit uh, <laughs> because she cancelled her appearance in Celebrity Big Brother to be in to be in this house um, but sadly for time that had to uh, that for had time, to go that had to go if there's ever plus one the movie Jeanette Cranky's got that gig yeah Oh, fuck off, Steve Jones! Swearing at Steve Jones. Um, and thus the end of uh, T4 on television for us. Our show within a show. Yep, shows within shows. And now uh, we have... I... Danny's Columbo turn. He called that his Columbo turn. Because this is where he delivers the sort of Columbo style... Ah, uh, one more question before I go. Um, explanation about, about why he knows what's happened has happened uh, this explanation went through so many iterations yeah, it was so much longer but then we actually realised that once we'd kind of given you the look here's why she is a mental what actually matters is that very very tender moment and you know apologies for being so wanky about it but with him and her when she says you should have invited me but again what I think we it's do a genuine is, moment of sweetness we get very near to an actual sincere romantic moment and we just undermine it by having Duncan walk Come in, in with only one bollock. One bollock. Um, we, when we pitched the ending to this final episode, um, Duncan walking into the office having been dumped by Lindsay, uh, it, was, it was never set in stone that that was what was going to happen. Um, it, when we shot it, and it was still not set in stone that it was going to be in. Yeah, as, as we originally wrote the script the very first time, um, we wrote at the end, you know, this was supposed to end with, you should have invited me then. Yeah, and then we wrote a note in the script saying, "Hello, here's some thoughts we've had. We could put this in after the credits." Yeah, but so we shot it, and once the edit was assembled, it was like, "Yeah, we've got to go out on that, haven't we?" So uh, there's a lot of thought. Oh, what happens in series two? And that's a very good question. And if we are ever gifted a series two, well, yeah, we? at the time of recording this, we don't know if there will ever be a no. series two. We like to think we've in five stroke six episodes, we've we've sort of rounded up a pleasing story, a pleasing narrative that that stretches across five to six episodes. Yeah, but you know, if we should, as Tim said, be gifted a series two, we've already kind of figured out a few things that might occur. Yes, we have. Um, we can look forward to... I don't know, do we want to tell people this? Oh, it's not going to, is it? Because you know what? If we get a second series, they might quite enjoy it. If we don't get a second series, here's what could have been. But sadly, we're out of time now. Ah, uh, we can't tell them, Tim. We can't tell them. We can't tell you what could happen in a prospective second series. Oh, man. Magic. Damn it all to hell. We would have told you about all the really exciting... And, and, and those great things. gags we've got worked out. All those amazing gags. People would have been well ahead of the series. So it only leaves me time to say thank you to everyone involved and to wish Stuart very good luck because he's getting married. I certainly am getting married before this DVD is available, so I assume my wedding was a lovely time. She's a lovely woman. Bye-bye.